This is uh, an old Chet Atkins model that was made uh, on 60 Broadway, right there in Brooklyn, New York. And this was one of the real deals. This was Harvey Simmons' guitar. And I used to go, some of you know the, the story on this, but uh, when I was a kid, I'd go over there for a haircut. Now, now we kind of started off getting a haircut yesterday, and he, he didn't do all the shenanigans that uh, <laughs> we talked about. And uh, we thought about getting a wig with holes in it and blood and everything else, but uh, we, uh, because my son-in-law and I did a little promo for this, as you know, Boomer, uh, Lucas Brown. But when I was a kid, we'd go into a barber shop, and Harvey could cut your hair and then give you a guitar lesson. And uh, so I'd go in, and he said, well, don't play some of that Chet Atkins stuff. And I'd usually start off with, oh, by Jingo. <laughs> song across. He was the most amazing finger picker alive. I mean, he really was. It was just amazing. And um, we lost uh, Chet many years ago now. It's hard to believe. I say many years ago, but to 20 years for a lot of you young guys that perhaps never got to meet Chet. I mean, that's a long time. And uh, I, I, think about, uh, I think about Harvey Simmons and my dad. They were all big, huge Chet fans. And uh, anyway, I used to admire this orange Gretsch that Harvey had in, in his barber shop. 
and he'd had usually have an old Fender Tweed amp next to it. And I thought, oh man, if I could ever have a guitar like that. Well, this is the guitar, and Harvey left it to me. So I call this one Harvey. So it's an honor to be able to play Harvey on the anniversary, 20th anniversary of Chet Atkins passing. And uh, we don't celebrate that, but we, we do commemorate it and uh, honor it and honor the chief. And so many guys are doing, I know Steve, uh, Steve Warner, go to his Facebook, had a, a great shot of, of him and Chet when, they, when he signed him on the RCA records. And uh, I said, boy, Chet always had a great way of, of, of finding talent, and he found a good one with Steve Warner. You can't get any better than him. And uh, I, I remember the first time I met Steve Warner, uh, I was with Grandpa Jones, and we were in Indiana, Washington, I believe, Indiana, somewhere up in that area and doing a, a dinner, some kind of theater. And I thought, that guy is gonna be a star. First time I ever heard him, I've never heard anybody sing with the sparkle like, the, like he had in his voice. I mean, he wasn't Andy Williams, he was different. Andy has, Andy Williams always had that something special. Glenn Campbell had that something special. Steve Warner has that. Whatever it is, he has it, and so, then he played uh, bass with Chet for a number of years. Uh, I knew him uh, I, also at the Opry when I was with Grandpa, and he played bass with Dottie West. He left Dottie and went on the, with Chet Atkins and was with him a while until Chet fired him because uh, his record started doing so good. He said I had to fire him to, uh, to get him on his own. <laughs> and Chet was a good mentor. He was a good boss. He was a chief. He really was. Well, Holly, is anybody on here yet? Yeah, we have several people logging in, saying hey. Hey, guys. Sounds good. Love good the to sound. have you on tonight. It's good to be home, I tell you. It's great. Tuning in from New York, Canada. Oh, wow. I'm sure oh. several of the places I'm not seeing. <laughs> I miss going to Canada. There are a lot of my t-shirts up there. I can't get them back, so <laughs> maybe you'll buy them. <laughs> You know, uh, I, I miss going up there. I was working with Godin for, see, I don't have my Godin in the room. I usually always have a Godin sitting around. I've got them right here, but anyway, uh, I, I used them on the Sweetwater uh, uh, Gear Fest. I was on Gear Fest last weekend. I don't know if you can still see that, but uh, they told me it was going to go live on Friday night. I was in the air. I was flying to Washington State to up to Seattle. And, uh, but, but in between flights, I was able to see a little bit of it, and I just watched some of the transitions and how they, they're, they're great editing. And, uh, but we did it right here in this room. Uh, but Gear Fest was a great thing. Featured orange amps, but I played a lot of guitars. I didn't play my Gretsch, I should have. But I played, uh, I think I played an Olsen. I played my uh, Doyle Dykes model Guild, and, and of course my old trusty Doyle Dykes model uh, uh, Taylor guitar, which I'll, do something on it next. And so I'll tell you a little story that has something to do with Seattle. I took it to Seattle with me last weekend. Wow, it was hot up there, guys. You, you guys in the Pacific Northwest, uh, uh, man, it was hot. I mean, it was, uh, I think, 113 degrees uh, yesterday uh, or Monday. And wow, uh, they're not used to that up there, Holly. You know, oh, a, lot no. of, a lot of folks don't even have air conditioners up there because it's such a beautiful area. But uh, look at this, folks. Uh, this is a uh, one of my treasured guitars that I have. I'll never get rid of. I, I did get rid of it. And I signed the the back of the headstock. I usually don't sign my own headstock on my guitar, my own personal guitars. But this one I happened to give away to a church in Seattle, and I took it this past Sunday because it happened uh, in 2000. What does that say, Holly? 2010, I think. Yep. I signed it to them in 2010. They were raising money. This this guitar was sitting on the stage, just lighting up the stage. I'm thinking, oh my Lord, I have to give them that guitar. And I did. And they uh, they were gonna raise money and auction it off. And uh, I was in the WGN radio uh, doing something up there with Stephen Johnny, on the Stephen Johnny show. And I love Stephen Johnny. They were the top DJs and uh, talk show DJs in Chicago, and it went to 38 states. And I'm and I'm sitting up there playing probably a Chet song or Martha's Kitchen. Because uh, Steve would normally say, "Play Martha's Kitchen." Yeah.
Doyle Dice model. It was a black guitar, but it was a prototype. And my friend Neil Ferry has that guitar today. But uh, it was basically the same guitar as this. And I'm sitting there playing my guitar, whatever it was then. It was probably a, just a brown sugar uh, DDSM or a black one. I don't think, because I, I gave the orange one away. And uh, this was about a month after I had uh, given it to the church. And so all of a sudden I, I keep feeling something hitting my leg. And so uh, uh, Steve uh, is on this side of the control. He's on the control at the control board. And Johnny, his wife, was sitting here. Steve Lyon was also in the room. And uh, anyway, she, she was pushing something against my leg. I thought, what are you doing? Finally, I looked down and I saw the case. And it, and it had the, uh, the date of this guitar and everything. And I knew the case because I wrote everything on there. And I just stopped and I said, what have you guys done? And uh, they said, we bought your guitar back. And so they did. <laughs> and uh, Steve and Johnny, along with Steve Lyon and his wife, and also uh, Bob Taylor and Cindy, his wife, and they all they all went together and, and bought uh, bought my guitar back. It it was amazing, an amazing story, and uh, so I still have it. it. Has Dad's picture on the inside of it, and, I, and I, I suppose this is the one I played at his funeral because my friend Charlie Wilson gave me several photos, and I stuck that photo in this guitar when I got home and. Uh, it's been in there ever since. And so uh, I put it in two or three other guitars. Um, but uh, anyway, folks, it's good to be with you tonight. I hope you're having a good summer day. It's hard to believe it's all the, almost the 4th of July already. It's crazy. What kind of comments? Who's talking to us? Anybody? Oh, goodness, I got several comments. Yeah. People turned in from Michigan, Florida, Texas, Georgia, Rhode Island. Love the dis Linda says she loves the display of your jackets behind you. Thank oh, you. Oh yeah, <laughs> you got to do something with them. I'm running out of space. <laughs> Randy Thank says, you. "Can you pick a Yankee Doodle Dixie in honor of Chet?" <laughs> oh, let's see. I don't know. Can I? Let me see. That's a nice one I haven't played on. Chet got that from some, this old man, he said, was playing the piano as a, a jazz piano player, and he played uh, Yankee Doodle on the left hand and Dixie on the right hand. Now, my brother played a song one time, he's a great piano player, and he played one, he played the same song, but on his left hand, he would play it in one key, and on his right hand, he played in a, in a different key. <laughs> I don't know how to work but it drove you crazy. Uh, Dusty asks, which Chet song touches your heart the most? 
Oh man, you know, I, I suppose it would. Uh, two guys I think of every single day since they've died um, and passed on that I there, I, there, I don't think there's been a day uh, that I was coherent. <laughs> and I don't mean that that I was strung out or something. I mean, there was one time I had an operation and I don't remember anything for about three days. But, uh, you know, there's not a day I don't think it's ever gone by. I think Dwayne Eddy would tell you the same thing. I know Steve Warner would. And most of my friends, Wesley Crider, guys like that, that, you know, great guitar players, Richard Smith. There's some really wonderful, wonderful uh, guitars. And Chet was such a part of our lives. Of course, Tommy, and uh, it goes without saying. We loved him. So you got silver poop. You want to? Yeah, I mean, poop. <laughs> guitar better than most of my guitars because I had it has my DNA in it I guess but it's so good it was so good to get this guitar back 
but I didn't use it for a long time and I was on the Grand Ole Opry, what it was it about six, seven months or six, seven uh, weeks ago. And uh, boy, I'm so glad the Opry has opened back up. And, uh, and I thought, well, I, I might just use my orange guitar again. And it was just so refreshing to do that. I did the Wabash Cannonball on this guitar. And uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, I just saw uh, they were thanking, thanking people. Uh, they had this in the room. They have, had a little packet and it talked about on behalf thank, of the Opry and, and the song. Thank you so very much. Uh, and it talked about uh, with the restrictions that they had and for going along with it. And they'll, they say, if you, if you can't handle this, you know, let us know. And, uh, but, you know, you couldn't visit the other uh, dressing rooms and you had to stay in your own room and you couldn't stand on the side of the stage, all COVID restrictions, of course, and uh, because the opera is just not that way. It's like church normally, everybody's visiting in the hall. And uh, they said, as soon as you play, you, of course, you enter in stage left, exit stage right, and then after you play, you must leave the building. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it, it still ended up being a very warm and fuzzy thing. I mean, that, they're, they're just that way. Those people, you can't out nice them over there. And even the, especially Dan Rogers and the whole crew, um, and of course, Gina that I've known for many years that, that schedules uh, me there. I mean, they're just some of the finest, Gina Keltner, some of the finest folks I've ever been around. I, I didn't make mention of my old friend Jimmy Caps while I was there, and I sure missed him. Well, what else is going on there, Holly? People are talking about Vincent, Wendy and Warm, Happy Again. Oh, yeah. Wildwood Flower. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wabash oh. Cannonball <laughs> for, for you. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't play Vincent normally. That's a beautiful song. Uh, I remember there's if you'll go, I'll play a little bit of it, but uh, there's a there's a, a, a YouTube video of uh, of Chet playing an Olsen guitar. And he smiled the whole time. I mean you could tell he really enjoyed playing James's guitar. This is an Olsen, this is uh, one that James made especially for me. kind of sacred ground for I never that's why I never played it you know that was Chet's song
somebody play like you did. And uh, I learned so much from him. Let me play something. Uh, of course, I love this guitar, but um, what was some of the other songs, Holly? Uh, let's see, did they mention? Okay. Nine Pound Hammer. <laughs> oh, yeah. From Ronald, what's that? I wanted to play, uh, you know, I heard from Fred Gretsch today. Uh, Fred called me and uh, was having lunch with Father John, the priest that he brings to the, uh, the Chet Convention often. And uh, Father John, congratulations. Uh, Father John, uh, today he uh, officially retired. But I said, you're not going to retire. You're just going to get a retread. <laughs> and uh, because and he loves guitar, loves playing the guitar. He said, I'm going to have a whole lot more time to spend on my instrument. And um, there's, I'll tell you, those boys in South Georgia, whether you're a priest or whatever you do, and uh, or a judge, uh, Judge Jay Stewart, early this morning sent me a, 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 a a YouTube, uh, just the music of him playing on an album. He was playing slide on this guy's guitar. And boy, what a guitar player he is. There's some good pickers down there. This is uh, Paul Reed Smith called me. Whoa. All these are, have different <laughs> volumes and everything. Let me see. Will this go down this way? Okay. There it is. I just got this guitar in a few days ago. And... Uh, just better stay right here and hang on you know so this is a, uh, a PRS and uh, I had this amp really loud well, this guitar sounds so good I took it to a church uh, and a friend of mine uh, Ron Brown over in uh, Monroe Louisiana International House of Prayer IHOP <laughs> the IHOP church <laughs> and I, now I think they call it House of Prayer International because of that but uh, we go way back. But I took this guitar out. I said, yeah, I just got this one. I just took it right out of the box, and I usually don't do this. So I took it up and started and just took it out at the sound check, and I'm going, oh, my Lord. I'm going to use this in church, and I did. And, uh, and this, is, uh, this is one of the, uh, I think, about a $1,100 uh, guitar, uh, one of the Angelus guitars. <laughs> and I have one of their other guitars, and it, what I like about it so much is it has a sound hole here. And I think I mentioned, because it's very much like an Olsen, about the same size. And I think I mentioned to James one time about putting a hole up here, and it was like, right. <laughs> and James, if you're watching, you may not remember that. But, um, but because of my ear, what uh, attracted me to that guitar so much, I got it from Kelly Barber over in Hawkins, Texas. And... Uh, what attracted me so much to that was that that little hole there because I could actually hear on my left ear because my right one you know I don't hear anything 
And so I can't, you know, when you usually hear most, when you're playing like this, you hear it mostly right here. But I can't because my ears, I can hear things over here. And, uh, but when I turn them just a little bit like this, oh, it just, I started, uh, well, I just started to grind. When I, when I played it for the first time, I could, instead of getting in front of a mirror or in a corner of a closet or something and trying to hear myself, you know, but it's beautiful. I, but I, this one doesn't have that, but it's a great guitar. I have a little bit of a lighter string on the, on the first one here because this has my favorite scale, which is a 25 and a quarter. And, uh, that, you know, the, the tailor here, I, had, I actually came up with that 24 and 7 eighths and with Bob. Bob sent me a couple of guitars. He sent me a 25, a, a 24 and a half. He sent me a 25 inch scale, and that's the distance from here to here. And uh, because the, it's shorter, you know, and uh, I think it was Wayne Charvel said, you know, if this was a football field, think about that. And you take away that many yards and, you know, it might just be a few, uh, just a, a fraction of an inch. But that's a lot of yardage on a football field. You know, you, could, you might hit a goal with that. And we did. Uh, but we had a 24 and 7 eighths on that, which is, is great. Real easy to play. 25 and a quarter gives you a little more tension and you can hit those low notes and one of the lower tunings a little bit better. And I, I just love this tension or this uh, scale. And this one has a little narrower neck than, uh, than my uh, DDSM Taylor. But I like it because the strings are a little closer here on this side. Don't get nervous, I'll play this song you can look online and put Doyle Dykes Grand Ole Opry twin six shooters and you'll see Holly on there playing with me <laughs>
notice that a little bit on the end. <laughs> you said I used to play it too fast, but I think still you always play it. No, I had to slow it down a little bit. Uh, that's a song I haven't played in a long time. That was awesome. But uh, because of this, the strings are a little closer together. It's a little... And uh, but the, how does that relate to Chet Atkins? Well, I'll tell you. I, I was with uh, Ray Pennington, Step One Records, and we came out with this record and put Twin Six Shooters. And uh, I remember I had, I, I was going to put a, a, a picture of me like this, you know, and I had a guitar, it, it, I had a nylon string, I think I had that Chet guitar or my sand guitar, and uh, there's the Chet Atkins Gibson, I'll talk about it in a moment. But uh, I had two guitars, a nylon string and a, and a, a regular six string, I think it's my Taylor, and so I had recorded that, I think it was on the 20th anniversary, and the sand, and that's the only thing I overdubbed on the whole record. But I played exactly the same thing, and uh, except I think when I did the lead uh, line on. <laughs> anyway, I did that on the nylon string guitar, and uh, I remember my friend Leo Leo Matheny here in town. He said, "No, oh, that's just too cowboy for you. You know, you got too much class for that, or something like that." So I changed it. And, uh, but I think we put that picture on the back of it. And I was going <laughs> like this with the one, and on the other side, I was going like, we're pointing towards each other, <laughs> just having fun. That was great. But it's called Twin Six Shooters. And I wrote a script, because back then, I mean, YouTube was, well, not YouTube, MTV, and uh, CM, what was the country? Uh, CMT? VH1, or CMT? Yeah, I mean, there were videos. Everybody was doing videos. That was back in, in the day. Every country star had a, 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 they spent a lot of money on videos. Well, I was already approved, I think, 25 grand to do this video. Back then, it was a lot of money. But this is in the mid to late 90s. And... Um, I, uh, I wrote it with Chet as the sheriff, and we were doing a western town, and Caleb was going to be in it. He's my little cowboy. He'd say, are you, Dad, are you a real cowboy? You know? And then it, you know, you, it would go back to a scene of, of the Wild West, and then Chet would come up. And uh, Anyway, we had our twin six-shooters, and uh, <clears throat> I asked him if he would do it with me, and he liked it. And uh, the little storyline thing we had, he said, oh, I would. But I can't. And uh, he says, I'm just not able physically. And uh, of course, he didn't know then that he, he had a, I think he had a brain tumor then. And he said, but I'm finishing up an album with this boy from Australia. It's mostly him. He said, uh, but he said, yeah, I've been, uh, I, you know, I, once I get that finished, you know, I think I, I uh, that's, that's enough on my plate right now. I can't add anything. But otherwise, if it wasn't for that, I'd do it. Of course, that was Tommy Emanuel, and when Finger Pickers took over the world, and that was the last album that Chet did. And um, I tried to call Dwayne Eddy. I'll call him in, in, uh, uh, in the next day or so, but Dwayne and I had several things in common. If you go to YouTube and put Doyle Dykes, Chet Atkins, and Dwayne Eddy, Grand Ole Opry, it'll bring up this video. And I sent it to uh, Governor Huckabee today and Jeff Carlisi, Willie Mosley, and uh, those are my buddies, and we have a little email thing. We, and and uh, I'll tell you about Huck. What uh, I call him Huck sometimes, but the governor sent me something today, and they all love Chet, and they went nuts. He said, "Man, I wish I could have been there," uh, but it was very interesting. It was the first time I've met Dwayne Eddy, and it was it was his first time on the Grand Ole Opry, and then uh, we were in uh, Roy Acuff's dressing room, all three of us, and he said, "Well." Boys, what are we going to do for the ending? They're going to ask us to do something together. That's Chet. You know? and, it's, and I said, well, well, we're in Mr. Acuff's room. I looked around. Why don't we do I Saw the Light? That's what he would have done. Yeah, that'd be a good one, Doyle. Let's do that. And he said, Dwayne and Dwayne had left for a minute to go to the restroom or get some water or whatever. He said, Dwayne will start it like that. <laughs> he did it exactly like that. And when we were up there playing, uh, I looked over at Chet and he was like, told you so, <laughs> you know, you could see it in his eyes. And he did it just exactly like Dwayne did, actually did play it. And of course, he nobody sounds like Dwayne and he has his own style, but he plays a lot like Chet. He, he's a great finger picker. Most people don't know that. So uh, we were able to be on the stage together and play some Chet tunes. Um, at Chet Atkins' days, which was at the Ryman Auditorium, my first time playing at the Ryman, 
and uh, they also honored uh, Grady Martin and uh, and Dwayne Eddy. Uh, so they were actually honoring Dwayne for Chet days, and Chet was sitting right next to us in a in a chair. I think it was a little couch they had there. And uh, he, he hollered at, that's good picking, boys. I mean, for Chet to say that, it's like, you know, you feel 16 feet tall. And Peter Frampton was on stage. Vince Gill, uh, um, oh, it was just a, a John uh, Fogarty. Uh, what a night. Uh, Willie Nelson was there. And uh, what a great man. Uh, so anyway, we had so much fun. So that's the last time Chet was at the Ryman, and then later Ch uh, Dwayne and I played a show at the, the Chet Atkins Appreciation Convention, It was and Chet played on stage, so it was the last night Chet played before an audience, and it was his, also his last night to attend the uh, Chet Atkins Appreciation Convention, and Dwayne and I were there. And I'll never forget, I went up first, and because uh, I've been there a lot of times, Dwayne had never been there. And I said, folks, we have a special guest here. When I said, Dwayne Eddy, that place erupted. It went amazing. And Chet gave Dwayne the, the biggest compliment and uh, uh, on the sound that he got out of his Gretsch guitar. And he was so proud of that. And he said, you make that sound way better than I ever did. But uh, Chet was such a gentleman. He was just a, a wonderful man. I remember too, uh, Dwayne and I had lunch with uh, with Chet. I hope this is not boring to anybody, but we uh, I went up one day and we, we the two of us took Chet out and uh, we went to a meet and three, what they call a meet and three to here down south is when you get a meet and three vegetables or whatever you want, and it's kind of a little cafeteria. I think it was Monel's, and uh, and we were going through and, and he said and he's paying. He pointed to me. That's <laughs> what well, I was glad to pay. And. Uh, <laughs> We passed by a little trophy place, too, on the way, and he said, yeah, if you boys ever want to get me a trophy, just go in there. It was just because, no, Dwayne and I both were just kind of quiet. Of course, Dwayne's a friendly guy. He always had something to say, but the two of us were still, you know, you kind of get lost for words when you're around your hero. And so Chet knew things were kind of quiet. He said, well, if you boys ever want to get me a trophy, uh, for whatever reason, there's a trophy house right there. <laughs> And, uh, and Dwayne or me, uh, one of us said, well, Chet, you have enough, uh, your share of trophies, haven't you? Yeah, but you can always use another one. He said, uh, yeah, but, you know, I never paid attention, a whole lot of attention to those awards I got and all that, as long as I keep getting them. And then he <laughs> paused and he said, as long as somebody else doesn't get more than me. You know? <laughs> so he had a real dry sense of humor, and uh, he was a funny character. And one of the favorite things we had to do was talk about Grandpa Jones. Everybody had their grandpa stories, and I traveled with Grandpa. And he said, well, don't you travel with Paul? Tell us a Grandpa story, you know. And uh, I think I told him about the one when uh, I was outside, and, and uh, we were in a, actually went in a bus, met Albert E. Brumley. It was at the Albert E. Brumley scene. Now, Albert E. Brumley was my grandfather's favorite songwriter. He wrote, I'll Meet You in the Morning by the Bright Riverside, uh, Turn Your Radio On, I'll Fly Away. I mean, so many wonderful songs he wrote. And I got to meet him and got a songbook signed uh, from him to my grandfather. But uh, when we walked out of that air-conditioned motorhome, it wasn't really a bus, it was an Argosy motorhome, belonged to Grandpa. And his banjo went way out of tune. It was a hot summer day, about this time of the year. and. <laughs> I was listening to my guitar, and I was at Grandpa, hey, Paul, and they're introducing us, and, and I was tugging on the shirt tail, and I hadn't been with him long. What is it? And I said, we're way out of tune with each other. He said, that's all right. It sounds like there's more of us that way. Get up here. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, I've noticed then that Chet always loved a Grandpa story. Um, when they were in the hospital, when Grandpa was in the hospital, he had a stroke. Mark Jones, Grandpa's son, told me this story. He said, I went over one day, and I, I walked in, and there's Chet. They rolled him, and he'd been in the hospital, too. And he wanted to see Grandpa, and they rolled him into his room in a wheelchair. And he gave him a little guitar, you know, and uh, he tried to pick a little bit, and, uh, and he said he sang uh, Arkansas Traveler. And, uh, you yeah. <laughs> And uh, and he 
said he just sat there and and I asked him, I said, because Grandpa wasn't responding and uh, too much. And he, I said, well, did Grandpa respond to him? He said, no. That's the way he talked. And he said, no. He said, he just kind of sat there and looked at him because he was still looking. He just had to stare. It's like, you know, don't don't give up your day job quite yet, Chet. Because <laughs> he said, you know, Chet wasn't much of a singer. And Mark talks just like his dad. <laughs> I'll never forget that. And, uh, but anyway, I thought that was a, a, must have been a sweet, I said that, to see two, he said, well, Dole, when I walked in there and I saw two legends, he said, even though he was my daddy, I knew he was a legend. And, uh, and there's Chet Atkins. He, he said, it really made my heart thump. It really did. And I can imagine. Any comments or anything, Holly? I'm sure yeah. probably a few. Yes, yeah, so several. Well, actually, Gary had asked if you had a favorite chat story, so, and you were just mentioning some That's of your chat one, stories. Some of my yeah. Favorites. yeah, absolutely. Or favorite hymn as well, somebody asked. Yeah. Well, you know, they're, they're oh, my Lord. I, I, told, uh, I told Mom, my wife, Rita, she said, How long are you going to go? I said, I won't go over an hour, you know, because I said, It's, it's summertime, and a lot of people have things to do. and and uh, I, show, I love this guitar, by the way. Uh, PRS, uh, really, uh, R. Reed Smith. What a nice guy, too. He's done a lot for the guitar world. Here's one. I gave Chet one just like this. If you look at the album cover for uh, uh, Finger Pickers or, or even the one Mark Knopfler did him, uh, with him, neck and neck. This is an old Del Vecchio. I gave Chet one, the one that's in that was in the Hall of Fame, the Country Music Hall of Fame. And this was, uh, but you know, I found two of them and I gave Chet the best one. <laughs> and uh, this one still needs a little bit more work on that, but. but uh, it just has that crying sound. Nobody uh, could get a sound out of it like, like Chet. Earl Clue did a nice job. Steve that. Warner also does a great job. Del Vecchio. And, um, but I remember walking into Chet's office one day, and he had called me over, and uh, he said, Dole, Steve's always talked about you and Steve Warner. Steve played on my first three albums, and uh, he played bass, of all things. And uh, Steve's a great bass player, but uh, I felt really silly having him play bass. He's such a great guitar player and an amazing singer. And, uh, but... Uh, he said, uh, Steve always talked about you, and I was going to go to one of your sessions, and the weather got bad or something, but he said, I always appreciate what you did for the church and, and for God. And I didn't, I had no idea he even knew what I did or knew anything about me, but he, he said that. And uh, he had his guitar case in his hand, and it had uh, some writing on it. It had a special preamp made by uh, Ray Butts, and that's in this guitar, so... So obviously this guitar is a special and uh, has some things to it that are may, maybe a little bit different, you know.
Oh, wow. Uh, you know, I remember uh, one time when Haley uh, was singing, first time she ever sang. We were at the uh, Chet Atkins Appreciation Convention, which I'll be there in about a week or so. Um, yeah, July the 9th, I think it's a Friday night I'll be there. Or Friday sometime. <laughs> Was singing, and we were in Kirk Sands' booth. You know, Kirk builds a guitar uh, very similar to th this. Beach, and uh, we were at uh, uh, Brittany's wedding. Remember, Brittany and Jonathan got married, my, little, my niece, and uh, it's hard to believe that they've been married 20 years. It's, it's hard to believe. But uh, Caleb, my son, came over to me and said, Dad, we just heard Chet die, and he was, I think, about, he was 12, I believe. Yeah, he was 12. And, uh, and I said, really? He said, yes, sir. And I took him by the, and put my arm around his shoulder and went over and I said, step over here. And I just couldn't even talk to anybody from there on. And uh, it was just uh, one of those things I'll never forget. And uh, we were in a flower bed. In fact, we just walked over by a little, little bush and, and uh, I couldn't hardly sleep. And I said, Lord, if there's anything I could do, I wish there was something I could do. And we went home the next day and, and uh, as the, when we got home, let's see, it was on Sunday night, we got home and Monday morning, Pete Fisher called. And he said, Doyle, they're having Chet's funeral tomorrow at the Ryman, but we're still going to have the Opry. And Pete was the manager of the Grand Ole Opry. He said, well, they're still going to have the Opry at the Opry House. And he said, would you honor Chet by playing a medley of Chet songs on the Grand Ole Opry? I mean, what better thing could I have done? I called Dwayne Eddy after that. Dwayne says, well, I'll go over to the funeral. I'll be there and support that. But Dole, he says, I'll cover the funeral and you cover the, the memorial or the, uh, the the tribute at the Opry. And that's what I did. They ended up putting, I think, on national television. I had no idea. And, uh, and so God knows uh, our desires. And he allowed me to do that. And I'm so thankful. I think Tommy Manuel was in Russia or someplace. He's on the other side of the world when that happened, as far as I can remember. But, of course, Steve Warner was there. Steve did so much. He loved Chet so much. <laughs> Thank you. 
heard that song from Orleans and he said, oh, it was like the end of a record. It was only about a minute long. And I heard it and I made it longer and I put it on a, 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 a tape and, Chet, and played it for Chet and said, let me hear that again. And of course it was Sales, and uh, one of the Chet's greatest songs. And then of course Steve ended up recording it with him also. Uh, there's so many stories we can tell. And uh, I remember uh, at the, uh, I was at the Grand Ole Opry and uh, when I met Mr. Stringfield, uh, Chet's neighbor, and he said, Dole, if, it, if, if there's ever been a question, he said, I walked uh, every day with Chet. We'd take a walk in our neighborhood and, and, uh, and I'd talk to him about the Lord. And, uh, you know, because Chet was real shy about things. And he says, uh, and he said something about, were you Christian? Something like that he said to him one time. He said, wait a minute, Chet. And he stopped right in the road. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but I'll tell you what he told me. Because both of them are gone now anyway. And Mr. Stringfield's in heaven. But he said, uh, don't you know Jesus? Uh, haven't you accepted him as Lord of your, of your life? Haven't, aren't you a Christian? Aren't you saved? Didn't you accept Christ? Didn't you get baptized? Yeah, well, you know, I took care of all that, Chet said. <laughs> and he said, I don't want to ever hear you Christians again because you're one of us. He said, well, I suppose he said, so, yeah, yeah, you know. And not too many people would have gotten his face like that, but they, but he said he did. And he said, oh, I can assure you, Chet was not only a good man, he was born again. And he had a good relationship with the Lord, and I think he even got closer in those last days that he lived. And, uh, and so one more thing, oh, a couple things. Uh, Keith Bilbrey, one of my good friends, and, uh, was the... Um, Oh man, if you, if you, in fact, Governor Huckabee uh, sent me a message today and he says, I noticed Keith Bilbrey's uh, in the credits, his name is on the credits on the Grand Ole Opry one. It was uh, Chet Atkins, me, and Dwayne Eddy, uh, and then uh, uh, Mike Snyder was the host of the show. And they, Keith Bilbrey, and it showed him on there. Keith was on the Opry as an Opry announcer. And of course, he's worked on Larry's Country Diner, many, many things he's done. And also, uh, He's on the Governor Huckabee's uh, television show. Uh, they had a house fire and a, a very historic house in Franklin, a very old house, I think about 150, 200 year old home. And uh, he lost, they lost pretty much everything in that fire. And so they're going to have a fundraiser. They've already set up a GoFundMe page. Uh, 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 and Keith Bilbrey. So if you will, if you want to be a part of that, and they're good people. I mean, really, really good people. And so just uh, just look that up and, and be a part of that. Uh, and also, uh, Tom Bresch has been under the weather, and they set up a... Uh, but I understand, I talked to Daryl a minute before I started this. I ran to the back, talked to my friend Daryl Owens in California. And uh, they said that he's doing much better today, and uh, but it, his hospital expenses are going to be astronomical, and they, they've already uh, set up a GoFundMe page for Tom Bresch. Of course, he's the son of Merle Travis. So uh, get involved with that too, folks. And uh, there are people out there that are hurting and need uh, some things, and so us, us pickers have to stick together. Not only support them like that financially, but also pray for them and pray for their their, their health and their spiritual walk and uh, and their just that the joy of the Lord will be their strength. And I pray that for you today, that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Through this pandemic, so many people have, have lost their joy. Well, you, you can't allow that to happen. You can't. You know, uh, somebody say, how do you spell joy, Jesus, others, and you? Now, here comes the preaching now. Okay, well... <laughs> But an old preacher I used to work with, how do you spell joy? And he'd say that at the end of the service, Jesus, others, and you. And, uh, and so if the joy of the Lord is our strength, that's actually joy that we can't muster up within ourselves. That's joy that comes from the inside out. That's joy that only comes from God. It's not something you get in, in, a, in a concert or in Las Vegas that might be a feel good or some conscious salve or make, you know, for some of you that just go to church to make yourself feel better. But when you have the joy of the Lord, that, it, that will give you strength and it'll give you peace. And I pray that for you today. And I hope you have a great summer. And as we've mentioned, Chet, 
also, Holly? Uh, thanks to everyone for subscribing to our YouTube channel. And if you haven't okay. already, please do. A little business. <laughs> please subscribe to our YouTube yeah, channel. It's youtube.com slash Doyle Dykes Music. So, yeah. And, and I have been giving free guitar lessons uh, on that called the, uh, the Guitar Poor Series. And so if you want to get on there for a free guitar lesson, like I say, I'm not a great teacher, but I can show you how I do things. And uh, <laughs> uh, whether you want to do it or not, you, it might be interesting for you to get on there and just, uh, and just watch some of these videos. I hope they'll be a blessing to you. And so I do a lot of performance videos on there as well. So subscribe and like. That'll help us so oh, much. This helps when you share the videos. Thank and you so sharing, much. We yeah, appreciate it. That'll be great. And anything else? Yeah, we have. Uh, oh, we have this stuff here. This fast fret just, that I that I love. I keep it in my guitar case all the time. And we started offering this on our. It's put out by GHS. You can see the sign in the back. We're big GHS uh, supporters, and they support us. I mean, they they've been a blessing to me with strings and things like that. But because they're good, they're great. All these guitars have GHS. It's like I got my Hickok 45 shirt on here tonight, and my son would be proud I said that. <laughs> and he's always talking about federal ammunition. <laughs> and, uh, maybe you're not a, a shooter, but uh, you know we like target shoot sometimes. But I love Hickok 45, and he's always talking about federal. I said, well, that's like that's my GHS, and they and you know they've outfitted all these guitars with the greatest strings, and we we love them and appreciate them. Well, God bless you, folks. Anything else, Holly? Yeah, I think you're I think you're good. Yeah, Great. Thanks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. God bless you, folks. Thanks.